Today, we'll be covering brand new research about a potential breakthrough in the medical device sector, non-ablative radio frequency. We're going to break it all down for you, explain exactly what it is, how it works to reverse hair loss, and the results you can expect. Spoiler alert, the results we have so far are sweet. You will not want to miss today's video. Stay tuned. Just before we get started today, I highly recommend getting a copy of our new free ebook, The Ultimate Hair Regrowth System. If you're interested in the step-by-step -step system for getting thicker, healthier hair and fixing hair loss at the root, then this is a must read. Just check out the link below this video, enter your email and grab your free copy now. Hello and welcome to today's episode. So when it comes to devices for hair loss, we don't currently have that many options out there. By far the most popular is low level laser therapy or LLLT, which is also FDA approved. In LLLT, you apply a low intensity laser on the scalp, typically for 15 minutes up to one hour at a time. Now, while this does seem to work, the results aren't that spectacular. Many guys who have tried it report it's a complete waste of time and money. Though for some it does seem to work. And now we have a new kid on the block, non-ablative radio frequency. So as the name suggests, this technique is based on radio frequency. If you remember from high school, these frequencies range from a few kilohertz all the way up to 300 gigahertz. So you have a device that generates the radio frequencies and it's attached to a handheld probe. You apply some gel and then just glide the probe over the area that you want to treat. The probe generates radio frequencies and these are conducted electrically to the tissues. The tissues then generate resistance to this energy. And and this resistance generates heat and the tissue with the greatest resistance is subcutaneous fat meaning this technique selectively targets the subcutaneous fat while sparing the outer region of the skin the so-called epidermis this is why it's called non-ablative because it doesn't destroy the outer layer of the skin so as you might have guessed the primary application of this method is for fat reduction cellulite reduction and loose skin it's also used for wrinkles brow lifts and skin rejuvenation in general now, the whole idea of applying this to hair loss came from the observation that certain types of wound healing seem to promote hair growth. At this point, we have lots of evidence from mice showing that you can basically induce the formation of new hair follicles through carefully placed wounds. But there's also evidence from humans, a lot of evidence, and I'm referring specifically to microneedling, where you create thousands of tiny pricks to the scalp and you basically increase the efficacy of something like minoxidil by up to four times. And then you have reports like this, somebody accidentally spilling boiling water on their cheek and a year later they have loads of new hair growing there. Now obviously something like this is unintentional and it did lead to permanent damage but it does show that there is some sort of link between wound healing and the formation of new hair follicles. So non-ablative radiofrequency uses the same general principle of hair follicle rejuvenation through carefully induced injury. In this case the injury is caused by heat in the subcutaneous fat layer underneath the outer surface of the skin. The precise mechanism through which this then causes hair growth is not understood at this point. So earlier in this year, we had the publication of this paper in the journal Dermatological Reviews. There's five authors from various universities and clinics in North America and Europe. So the credibility of this is pretty high. So these guys recruited 10 male and 10 female subjects with an average age of 35 years. The men were at least a Norwood 3. The device was set at 460 kilohertz with an output of 12 watts. Each session lasted five minutes and there were a total of 10 sessions that were spaced one week apart. The the primary efficacy measure was hair regrowth at an area that was one centimeter squared. There was no control group. So here's the results. After 10 sessions, the average hair count increased from an average of 148 to 168 hairs. That's 20 new hairs per centimeter squared, which is slightly better than finasteride. When all was said and done, 19 out of 20 subjects showed at least some improvement. But this was not the first research on this topic. Back in 2019, we got this study courtesy of an international research team out of Europe and China. There were 19 subjects in the non-ablative radio frequency group and another five in a control group. The control group basically used the same device, but with the power switched off. The frequency once again was 460 kilohertz, identical to the 2021 study. There was an average of four sessions once every three weeks, and each session lasted about five minutes. And here's the results. There was an average of 22. 
9.8% increase in the treatment group versus 9.6% for the placebo group. The difference wasn't quite statistically significant, but given how small the sample size was, I wouldn't worry about that because you do need a big sample size to get statistical significance. So the difference does seem legitimate. So what's our verdict on this? In a nutshell, if you have the budget for this, then non-ablative radiofrequency might be an option worth considering. On balance, the evidence suggests that it is effective against hair loss. But bear in mind, the evidence is still very limited. We would like to see more studies before we can say more about this with confidence. Other advantages are that it's not surgical, it's not invasive, it's not systemic, and it won't damage your skin. It's also suitable for all skin types and all hair colors, and there aren't any major contraindications. It's also super quick and each session lasts about five minutes and you won't have to do this more than once every few weeks so we're talking minimal time investment it's also going to be cheaper to something like say prp but you will have to do it at a clinic so at the end of the day it's not going to be the cheapest treatment out there side effects are minimal but you have to be prepared there's going to be a good chance you'll be able to smell skin burning and that will be your skin and the big unknown at this point is how permanent the results are the few studies that we have did not include a follow-up so we don't know at this point how long the results will last. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Had you heard of non-ablative radiofrequency before? Is it something you would consider using? And we'd especially love to hear from you if this is a treatment that you've actually tried. I've also linked to the research that we covered today in the description below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to grab your own free copy of the Ultimate Hair Regrowth System in the link below this video. Till next time, this was Tony for HairGuard. Take care.